the paint, the base, the miniature, we're going to be using five colors. Our buckles brown from scale 75 is our primary base coat. And on top of that, we're going to be dry brushing a couple of colors from Games Workshop and P3. Morn Faring Brown, XV88, Nurgling Green, and then from P3, Moldy Ochre. To add the texturing on the base, I also use Chili Pepper Flakes, and these are just your garden variety tabletop spice, which we affix to the base with super glue. So the first thing that we're going to be tackling on the Night Hunt model is the base, and I usually like to tackle this part of the model first. Um, particularly with this range of models, is because of the way a lot of their cloaks uh, slip and dip into the ground and the way they attach to the base, I find it's much easier to get this messy part of the, the painting out of the way first before then going back in with the cloak and hand painting it. And the reason for this is because we do a lot of dry brushing, we can work our way around different elements of the cloak. We can be a little bit messy at this stage, and then once we go back in and start blending up and highlighting the cloak, we can cover sort of the messier dry brushing that we did earlier on. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be applying a base coat using Scale 75's Arbuckles Brown. Now I've done this off camera just because I wanted to have the paint dry and ready to go. Um, it's really just a simple base coat using a dark uh, ready brown. It looks something like this. There's a bit of a, a purplish tone to it, but like very, very subtle. So if you're looking for alternative brand uh, colors or different uh, colors in particular, not this particular one, what you're looking for is just a dark, ready purple brown. Apply a base coat, let it dry, and then we're going to be proceeding with a couple of simple dry brush coats. So the four colors we're going to be using for this stage are all um, Games Workshop and P3 colors. And I only do this because this is sort of like a legacy color scheme for me. I no longer use uh, Games Workshop's paints for the most part, a couple of contrasts here and there. And so I haven't found any colors from the paint ranges I do use nowadays, which is Vallejo and AK, that are anywhere close to matching this. I don't really paint a lot of Night Hot nowadays, so this really isn't an issue for me. But if you want to find some alternatives, these are what the colors are going to look like. So you're looking for a medium tone brown, sort of a, a dark ochre, a sickly green, and then a yellow ochre color. So we're using Mornfang Brown, XV88. This is Nurgling Green, and then Moldy Ochre. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a dry brush overall with the Morn Frame Brown. And then we're going to do some spot highlights with the XV88, uh, focusing more so around the edges. The Nurgling Green is dry brushed wherever the cloak sort of comes into contact with the ground. And I've envisioned this as sort of those um, deathly energies or um, ethereal wisps sort of just bleeding into the environment around. And then we'll fin finalize with some very light dry brushing of moldy ochre and just some minor spots here and there to, to brighten up whatever spots need to be brightened up. I'm using an old brush for this. So once we've done our uh, more frame brown dry brush all, all over the entire base, we're going to now start focusing the XV88. Like I mentioned, this is primarily focused around the edges of the models. And if you want to help reinforce some of your, your directional lighting, um, figure out where your light source is coming from. I'm probably going to be lighting it from dead on from the miniature, so this direction. And we're going to focus some of our brighter spots on the front here. At this stage, I avoid doing um, a uniform dry brush all over the entire base. I want to create sort of these varying patches of color. This will help to just reinforce or just to create a bit of a uh, an unevenness to the surface that gives it a bit more visual interest. Because this is for an army, I don't really spend too much time um, overthinking the base for this though. I'm just keeping it nice and simple. The Chili powders that we end up putting on top afterwards does tend to cover up a lot of this detail. That's also why I don't really spend too much time overthinking really where I'm applying the colors. So once the XV8 is done, we go back in with some Nurgling Green. 
And I'm really going to focus this color mainly again on where the cloak sort of touches the base or comes into contact with the ground. And this is where I'm expecting some of that energy to sort of be bleeding through. I'm going to avoid getting too much of this anywhere else on the base except for where the cloak comes into contact. And my final step is to add the moldy ochre, and we're just going to focus it on a couple of patches here in the front, maybe on the side. We're not going to um, cover up too much of the base. Really, if there's like some interesting rocks or maybe some like cobblestone or whatever that you've uh, also applied as a texture to the base, this is sort of what you want to use to pick it out. But right now, I'm focusing on some of the more raised uh, parts of the base. There's a couple of higher mounds I've applied near the tombstone and then just on this part of the base right here. So I'm focusing on those elements and leaving the rest relatively dark. And that's pretty much it for drawbrush from the colors. What we're going to do is we're going to paint the rest of the miniature first. We'll trim the base in black and then we'll come back in at the very final stage once we've painted the model to apply our chili powder flakes. So with the model painted, the last thing that we're going to be doing is gluing in our autumn leaf texture. And for this, I'm just using your generic uh, chili flakes, chili pepper flakes. Um, you can use things like oregano, thyme, basil, parsley. They all make really, really good uh, ground foliage or just sort of ground texturing. To do this, we're just going to be using super glue. We're going to dab it onto the base and then sprinkle the pepper flakes on. <laughs> 